to change, but right now it's blowing left to right. It should help the left-handed pull hitters. Uh, Cubs don't have a lot of those in their lineup, but we do know we got some righties that can go the other way, so we'll see what happens. The Astros come in uh, having won one of their first nine after starting the year losing eight in a row. They won yesterday. Hopefully that'll be a good thing for the Cubs. Well, we speculated yesterday that they would get in here to Chicago last night and go celebrate their first victory of the season. Maybe we'll catch them a little bit down today, but... Uh, it was a pretty morose group before that win yesterday. A wild one yesterday as the Cubs tried to get the sweep over Milwaukee. Let's check in on the highlights. Always a good day for some good eats on a beautiful day here at Wrigley Field. Cubs trailed early one to nothing. Derek Lee after sitting out on Wednesday with the sore thumb. First at bat against Jeff Supon. A home run to straightaway center that tied the game at one apiece. This game would be a seesaw affair all day. Casey McGee with a two-run homer. That made it 3-2 Brewers. That came off Carlos Zambrano. Fourth inning, Marlon Bird, a two-run homer, almost into the center field bleachers, tying it up at 4-4. Cubs would continue to use the long ball. A game-tying blast by Aramis Ramirez, just out and left. A 5-5 tie. Milwaukee would take a 6-5 lead in the seventh. Ricky Weeks. Off Jeff Samarja, diving attempt by Marlon Bird, couldn't get it. Joe Inglick scores in the eighth inning. Ryan Braun, who had a big day, hits one to the back of the bleachers, 7 5 Brewers. And then Braun again with an infield single off the glove of John Grabo, one of their two unearned runs on the day. So adding some insurance, it actually uh, became pretty big insurance as the Cubs would rally off. Trevor Hoffman in the bottom of the ninth. The sun field was right. Corey Hart had some problems as Chad Tracy got his first hit as a Cub. This one, I thought it might have a chance to go. I think Aramis did too. Jim Edmonds is able to run it down on the warning track. 8-6 the final. And again, Bob, the, the bullpen giving up runs when this team needed to kind of hang around. Well, especially in that eighth inning, that's been a real troublesome spot for Lou Pinello, Larry Rothschild, and those guys down in the bullpen. And Lou has said repeatedly in the early going, we got to tighten it up down there in the pen. Yeah, let's hear from Lou about how he's feeling late in a ball game. What do I do? I pray. Um, look, these guys are going to get better. We need to tighten it up. There's no question. Uh, we've given up. Uh, yesterday was, uh, was, was a game where we're, we fell behind, we caught up, we fell behind, we caught up, and we could have just held the game in check just a little bit. Uh, I, I know we, we could have uh, come out on top on that one, but we just can't give up these tack-on runs. We talk about adding tack-on runs ourselves and how important it is. And uh, when you're on the other side of it, uh, uh, you, you've got to hold the opposition down. So, who do I use today? I, I the, the the two guys are 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 uh, are uh, Grable and uh, and Marshall. I I and 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 we get the marble. We'll have a graphic a little bit later on the offensive struggles of the Astros. One guy not struggling, Michael Bourne, coming off an excellent year last year, also won the gold glove in center. And our David Kaplan had a chance to talk to Michael Bourne. Astros outfielder Michael Bourne, one of the fastest guys in Major League Baseball, is our guest here on the pregame show. Lou Pinella talked about you in his pregame media chat. He said, we have to keep that young man off the bases. So, obviously, that is a, a real sincere compliment. Uh, I guess so. Uh, you know, uh, from him, he's been uh, been around for a long time. You know, I watched him. He uh, used to coach one of my one of my good friends in Carl Crawford at, uh, when he was with Tampa Bay. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, he knows the game pretty well, so I guess I do take that as a compliment. Now, last year, you did not run a, that effectively against Chicago. What did they do to keep you from being successful stealing bases? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really didn't. I don't know. I, I might have stole a couple, but they just have a – they mix their pitches up real well. The counts, you know, a lot of people hold on real well. They, they mix up how, how they go to the plate, good pickoff moves. So, you know, you got to just – Take it what's given to you, you know. Whatever team's given to me, I'll take it, you know. And uh, I just try to sneak them in there every now and then. Now, you guys got your first win. You knock off a really good St. Louis team. Your thoughts on what's the state of your baseball team? What's the mental approach? Stay loose. <laughs> That's it. We have nothing else besides that. Stay loose and play the game. And uh, from there, 
We just see what happens. It's a little cold out here today. Yeah, it was 83 here yesterday. It's I know. gotten a little chilly. Yeah, a little, I just felt it. And, uh, but, you know, it's always a pleasure to play in Chicago. You know, it's a great atmosphere, a great place to play. So, you know, we, we enjoy coming here as a team. Now, the bleacherites like to get on you. Do you enjoy that? Bob Brenly said to me, I loved when I came here and they got on me because there's something special about Wrigley. I, well, yeah, well, I like it, but I like it more in left field. I hear him get on Carlos, you know. He, he eggs it on even more, you know. He, he, he goes out there and starts putting his hands up. He don't care what's going on. That's, that's what he likes here, you know. Uh, they get him going pretty good, so I hope they get him going in a good way today. Now, in the last couple years, they put a new field in here. Do you notice the difference? There's no crown in center field. It's a brand new field, or is it the same old, same old to you? Oh, I don't even pay attention to that. I just <laughs> same old field to me. You know, uh, I just try to go out there, and enjoy the game, enjoy the uh, enjoy the atmosphere, and you know, try to get a W. Last one, Carlos Silva pitches for the Cubs today. He's a guy that keeps the ball down. Any special approach against him? Never faced him before, so, you know, I don't know too much about him. Just have to go in and see what he got and, you know, try to try to see what we can do off of him. All right, thanks for your time. All right, you're welcome. All right, that's Astros outfielder Michael Bourne. Let's send it back up top to Len Casper. Cap, thanks very much. Michael Bourne will be in that leadoff spot for the Astros today. We'll talk about the starting pitching matchup when we return. Cubs pregame live. Okay. I like doing the minor league report in the pregame. We should do it on uh, leadoff man too because of all the elements we have now, we always say we're going to do it and then we always forget. That's great. the Cubs minor league report a couple of catchers triple uh, A and double A with good offensive performances with Daytona right hander Alberto Cabrera with a nice performance Tennessee by the way at double A six and one they're two games up in first in the North Division of the Southern League now today's starting pitchers Carlos Silva no decision his first time out but pitched extremely well Felipe Paulino makes his second start. Baba, 110 pitches in five innings for Paulino in that outing. Now this is a game the Cubs need to steal from the Astros with Paulino on the mound. So Silva for the Cubs, Paulino for the visitors. We'll have Cubs baseball here on Comcast Sportsnet live from Wrigley Field coming up.
Talk about a well-rounded team? Then let's talk about the great lineup of vehicles you'll find at your local Toyota dealer. We'll just talk slower. What time do you guys have? It says 110 on their clock. Yeah, you should. I should tell him. Tell him. I told everybody. I told Carl and uh, Wally yesterday. from Wrigley Field on another windy day here in Chicago. Temperatures a little bit cooler, but very comfortable as Comcast Sportsnet presents Chicago Cubs baseball. Today, the Northsiders open up a three-game weekend series against the Houston Astros. Hi again, everyone. Alongside Bob Brenly, I'm Len Casper. New opponent, the Cubs beat the Brewers two out of three. They welcome in Houston. They have a new manager, Brad Mills, who probably never in his wildest dreams thought it would be that tough to win one ball game. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a lot more tougher to win that first game than you realize, especially without Lance Berkman. Carlos Lee's off to a very slow start this year. You see the numbers specifically for the offense of the Houston Astros. It's been a tough go in the early going. So they snapped an eight-game losing streak by beating the Cardinals yesterday. Cubs continue to try to sort things out in their bullpen. Well, and it's going to be an ongoing process until somebody steps forward and, uh, to use that old cliche, grabs the bull by the horns. We know that Lou Pinella will play favorites. He'll play the hot hand. Whoever steps up in that bullpen and shows they can get those big outs in the eighth inning, it's going to be their job as a setup man. Carlos Silva was uh, pretty efficient in his Cubs debut in Cincinnati, and we know he likes to throw strikes. Today, however, he might expand that zone against a very aggressive team. Yeah, they swing a lot of early counts, early pitch counts, rather, and if Silva's throwing strikes, the way he did in Cincinnati. Hopefully a lot of those balls will be put in play right at Cubs defenders. Hasn't pitched a whole lot here at Wrigley Field, but he'll make his home debut as a member of the Cubs. Felipe Paulino, a right-hander, their fifth starter for Houston. So we'll have the first pitch coming up, but first let's enjoy the stylings of Jeff Ray, who will handle our national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that 
star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Good stuff from Jeff Ray as Lou Pinella hopes his team can get back to its winning ways at home here today against the Houston Astros. The first pitch is right around the corner. Did you notice Hunter Pence during the anthem down there? No. Couldn't stand, Couldn't stand still. still. Back and forth and back and forth. Damn, you guys are human Red Bull. Other than you, you mean? Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part. Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Lexus, reinventing the vehicle that invented it all. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, member owned means our reason for being is your well-being. Experience, wellness, everywhere. AT&T, see what's new from AT&T. Visit att.com for details. And by Southwest Airlines, visit southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Welcome back to the ballpark. Again, another comfortable day, not nearly as hot as the last couple of days, but we'll take it here in mid April. And the first 10,000 adults through the gates getting a Cubs cup slash tumbler. Enjoy a beverage this afternoon. Meacham and Luke Pinella exchanging the lineup cards at home plate. First of 15 meetings between the Cubs and the Astros. Go over the ground rules, and there are a few here that are unique to Wrigley Field. Only matinee, everything else around baseball is under the lights. Set the umpires for you. Brian O'Nora will call the balls and strikes. 13 year veteran, native of Ohio, Phil Cuzzy, Chris Cuccioni, and the crew chief, longtime umpire Jerry Crawford over at third. Felipe Paulino will start today against Carlos Silva. We showed you those numbers. Uh, Astros haven't walked a whole lot. We'll see if uh, Silva can take advantage of that. They had six walks through seven games to start the season. Five of those coming from the first two batters in the order Michael Bourne and Jeff Keppinger. And now the Astros Southwest starting lineup. You'll notice a name not on that list. Lance Berkman is on the DL recovering from left knee surgery. He'll probably be back early next week. So they go Bourne, Keppinger, Feliz, 
third baseman by trade over at first. Carlos Lee. Yeah, kind of worry about this. A very slow start, but he loves this ballpark. Pence, Johnson, Manzella at short, and Quintero and Paulino make up their battery. And let's now take a look at the Jimmy Johns Cubs defense for today. Soriano Bird, Fukudome once again across the outfield. Ramirez, Terrio, Fontenot, Lee across the infield. Boy Hill getting the nod behind the plate. He has been really good, or the Cubs record has been really good, rather, when Coy Hill starts. He'll be catching pitches from right-hander Carlos Silva. You mentioned Silva's outing in Cincinnati. He came away with a no decision, but was really good in that ball game. A lot of low strikes. And a lot of early swings from the Reds hitter. A lot of ground balls to the infield. So his second start. And congratulations, Corey Miller. He and Edgar Tovar, the Cubs bullpen catchers. Congrats to the Miller family as they welcomed in a bouncing baby boy. Born in Clovis, California earlier this week. Brighton C. Miller checking in at seven pounds and four ounces. So congrats. As Corey just rejoined the team today. And Brighton some catchers gear. Started early. Yeah. <laughs> Make him a lefty. Go. Michael Bourne takes a knee high sinker at 89 for strike one. And we're underway. Out into center. It's going to hold up for Marlon Bird. Good to get Michael Bourne out of there. Bob mentioned the top two guys have done the most damage. Bourne. Coming in at 394. Jeff Keppinger at 391. Although Keppinger does a lot better generally against lefties than righties. Anytime you can get Michael Bourne to hit the ball in the air, you got a pretty good chance to retire him. He's got tremendous speed. He's much more dangerous when he puts the ball in play on the ground. So let's start to the ball game. Strike. And a good contact, man. Jeff Keppinger. The weather 62 degrees. The wind out of the northwest at seven. Not much cooler, but the way I put it, if the weather the first three days of this homestand were like normal April days here, today's day weather would feel like the best weather ever. Now Mother Nature set the bar pretty high. 83 degrees here at game time yesterday. July like conditions. Two one hit on the ground to Ryan Terrio. Uh, started every game at short for the Cubs. Two quick outs. I think that's something that Lupinello is going to keep a close eye on this year. Ryan Terrio, uh, not big of stature. He works hard in that weight room to maintain his strength throughout the season. But as we've seen in years past, when you get down to the dog days of August and September, uh, you need some off time, so maybe Lou will mix in some off days earlier in the season this year. The only two Cubs who have started every game, the left side of the infield, Ramirez at third and Terrio at short. Yeah, the outfield involved in that five-man rotation to try to get Tyler Colvin and Xavier Nady some at-bats. Derek Lee missed some time with that thumb injury, and Jeff Baker and Mike Fontenot splitting time at second, as well as Soto and Hill behind the plate. Two strikes on Pedro Feliz, first year with the Astros. The spring training type number 77. I think he wore number seven in Philadelphia. That number has been retired, I believe, Set. by the Astros. Uh, Craig Biggio. Craig Biggio yeah. So uh, he doubled up his Philadelphia number. Defensive swing there by Feliz just to stay alive in the sequence. Good sinker just off the outside corner, down below the knees. Oh, and he got hit on an 0-2 pitch that got away from Silva. That was a fastball. The 
Certainly wouldn't expect any intent. A two seamer there that really sailed up and in. No opportunity at all for Feliz to get out of the way of that one. A rip shot to bring up Carlos Lee. Without an RBI. They're nine games into the season. Been one of the best RBI men in the game. Five straight years of at least a hundred called strike. You know, sometimes you can point to the guys hitting ahead of you in the order and say, well, I haven't had opportunities. There haven't been men on base. But as we told you before, the number one and two hitters for the Astros, third in the majors in batting average in the early going. And he drills it to deep left. Soriano with the jump and the catch. Nicely done by Soriano. Doesn't like going into that wall. He did that time and robs Carlos Lee. The Cubs are coming up. about 550 pounds of beef on that mound today. <laughs> now the Cubs Southwest starting lineup hitting 337 at home 197 on their first road trip. Terrio, Fukudome, and Lee. Derek with his 100th career homer at Wrigley yesterday. Ramirez, Bird, and Soriano in the middle. Fontano, Hill, and Silva rounding it out. And the bleacher bums at it already on Carlos Lee out there in left field. You heard Michael Bourne talk about it. Carlos kind of eggs him on a little bit out there in left. Low ball one from Felipe Paulino to Ryan Terrio. They have a connection at one time. They were both short stops. Paulino converted to the mound. One and one the count. You see the numbers for Paulino against the Phillies in an ultimate 9-6 Astros loss. Fours were wild. Four hits, four runs, four walks, four strikeouts in five innings of work. That's the four for four deal. Manzella's got a hurry. He does and gets Terrio. Let's take a look at the rest of the Astros defensively brought to you by Jimmy Johns. We know big Carlos Lee El Caballo out there in left field. Michael Bourne in center. Hunter Pence over in right field. Chris Johnson at third base. Tommy Manziel at short. Jeff Kepinger at second. Pedro Feliz over at first base. Humberto Quintero behind the plate today. Receiving pitches from right-hander Felipe Paulino. Paulino 26 years old as he faces Kosuke Fukudome. For the first pitch, Lee battling the sun here in the uh, early afternoon hours. We saw yesterday the uh, center fielder eventually will have a problem, and then in about three hours it'll be the right fielder. Now, fortunately for Carlos Lee, that ball had a lot of slice on it. It started out in straightaway left field where he was really battling it, but as he moved closer to the foul line, he uh, kind of got that ball out of the sun, was make, able to make that a routine play. Derek Lee, who was ejected after a called third strike yesterday. Very rare ejection for him. Ball one. You see the fastball sitting in the mid 90s for Paulino. Also throws a slider, a splitter, occasional curveball. Lee. 
One and one on Lee. Ramirez on deck. Derek with two homers. Aramis has three. Marlon Bird has three already. Comes with 15 home runs tied for the second most in Major League Baseball. Slider at 86 for a strike. No question, Paulino has a power arm out there on the mound. The results just uh, have not quite matched the stuff at this point. I mean, he's really had a rough go of it on the road throughout his career. Three and six with an ERA of over eight. And he surrendered 15 home runs in 46 innings. And he's a road warrior. Derek was late on that swing. The pitch was in. And he was able to fight it off. Hard slider once again. This one up around the belt. Never really took a good break, but he Lee fought it off. Stay alive. Hit hard and knocked down nicely by Keppinger, who makes the play. The Cubs go down quickly. One, two, three. Nothing, nothing after one. Hunter Pence leading off the Astros second. Batting fifth in their order. All star last year. There's a bundle of energy. Good arm in the outfield. It's like rocking motion in the batter's box as he hits it foul and back to the seats one and one. Made the joke last year that uh, they need to organize a search party to find the rustlers that stole his calves. Long and lean is Hunter Pence. Ryan Sandberg fan excited. Catch a foul <laughs> ball. Nice going. One two from Silva is away. Just 71 pitches to get through six innings in his first start of the year. And a little shoulder stiffness. Nothing serious. That was one week ago. Cubs have kept their ace Carlos Zambrano on an every fifth day routine. And with some early off days, it's forced a couple of guys to have to adjust. Get that extra day or two. 
I really think over the course of the long season, Len, that's going to benefit those starters to get that occasional extra day from time to time. We all know that starting pitchers are creatures of habit. They like to throw every fifth day, stay on that regular routine, but physically, I think it's going to benefit the guys in the rotation. Cubs piled up 11 wins and 17 tries versus Houston last season. Again, the first of 15 meetings this year. Call strike three. Well, you mentioned a bundle of energy as Hunter Pence, and a good pitch to him is a straight changeup. He wants to hit the fastball or the hard breaking ball, but Carlos Silva with a perfectly spotted changeup for strike three. Monday, the NBA playoffs are on Comcast Sportsnet as Derrick Rose and the Bulls face King James and the Cavs. Tune in for round one. The Bulls look to prove they can upset the league's best. It starts at 6.30 with Bulls pregame live. Bulls and Cavs Monday night at 6.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Third baseman Chris Johnson. A foul strike on him. Fourth rounder back in 06. Out of Stetson University. Will they give you a really cool hat when you graduate from Stetson? I don't know. I have to ask him. He earned his way onto this opening day roster by uh, leading the Grapefruit League in homers and RBIs. Eight spring training home runs. That's, that's impressive. Swing and a miss as he gets him on a fastball back to back case for Silva. Well, spring training's over. Good sinking fastball out over the plate and down from Carlos Silva. A guy like Johnson in this lineup and Manzella, a couple guys that the Cubs are not overly familiar with. It's going to be a learning process. You execute your pitches, you see how they react to them, and slowly start to develop a book on how you want to go about getting them out. There's a third rounder in 05 out of Tulane. And today is his 27th birthday. He replaced Miguel Tejada at shortstop. Tejada Made 157 starts at shortstop last year for Houston. It's now back in Baltimore. Now Manzella reportedly a superior defender at shortstop. Three times he was named the best defensive infielder in the Astros system by Baseball America. We know Tejada was more known for his bat than his glove. It sounds like Manzella is just the opposite. And Silva strikes out the side. Bottom two coming up. It's early. No score.
Chicago Blackhawks have a way for you to catch the exciting playoff action live. Text playoffs to Beehawks. That's 242 957 to join Blackhawks Mobile and be entered to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming Blackhawks home playoff game. That's playoffs to 242 957 for your chance to win the hottest ticket in town. All the action tonight. Right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Game one against Nashville. Ramirez, Bird, and Soriano against righty Felipe Paulino. And Ramirez lofts it out into right center as Pence comes over and makes a catch. Did you think Aramis got what would have been a game tying homer in the ninth well, as yesterday. Much as, as much as I wanted that ball to get up in the basket, I just didn't think he got quite enough. Maybe earlier in the ball game when the wind was blowing a, a lot harder straight out to center field, but by that point of the ball game, it was more blowing across and not nearly as hard. Marlon Birds with a no doubter. Just below the center field bleachers. That home run you were talking about in the ball game yesterday. I mean, wind or no wind, this ball was going to get out of the park. The only question was how far hit it well over the batter's eye, nearly into those bleachers out in straightaway center field. You have already noticed just how hard Marlon Bird works. Very specific pregame routine. Some of that, Len, is a direct result of his work with Rudy Jaramillo down in Texas, but most of it is just a very conscientious professional. He believes that he has certain things he needs to do every day to prepare for a ball game, and he's not afraid to work hard before they sing the anthem, and that's, uh, that's kind of unusual. Two two on Marlin. Sun's going to be uh, in and out today. There's some clouds overhead, but when it's dry. That's the key. Manzella picks it up, moving to his left. It's time for our Home Depot doing more on defense. Came early in the ball game. Alonso Soriano has had some issues out in left field, specifically with the wall out there, but makes a nice leaping running catch right up against the vines. To Rob El Caballo of a possible extra base hit. Speaking of Home Depot, I went to Home Depot last night. How was it? It was awesome. I'd like to thank uh, Joey Fratangelo and Corey Urban. They really helped me a lot. We had some planters for the patio, you know, some of those things. Uh, Looks so nice this time of year. Pretty flowers and so forth, and uh, they were of tremendous assistance. Do they sell seesaws at Home Depot? You should have bought one. You could build one, I'm, I'm sure. sure. You could, yeah. Talking about seesaws yesterday. Two strikes to Soriano. I'm still looking for their first base runner against Paulino. They won't get it through two. Nothing, nothing. Astros and Cubs.
Ohio Silva. I was going to look up all the whole. What with a with a something something. Yeah. 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 Seats for April and May games. Bleacher seats are still available as well. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com, call 1 800 The Cubs, or visit the Wrigley Field box office. Fans getting the weekend off to an early start with some Cubs baseball from the friendly confines. No score. We begin the third. Berto Quintero sharing time with J.R. Tolls behind the plate. The Astros staved off a uh, record tying, at least franchise record tying, 0 9 start by beating St. Louis yesterday. Bird the catch, Quintero's out. They were the last team to get their first win of the season. Taylor, and that's a concern for any manager in his first year with a new team. I'm sure Brad Mills was glad to get that monkey off of his back. I, I was very satisfied when uh, my Diamondbacks team beat the Dodgers. Game one, get it out of the way. It's Brad Mills, a former bench coach for Terry Francona. So he comes over from Boston. The guy who finished last year as their manager, Dave Clark, he took over for Cecil Cooper. Is still with the coaching staff at third base, a former Cub. Paulino backing up Terrio, and it sneaks right under his glove. And that is the first hit for either team. It comes from Felipe Paulino, who already has a couple of hits on the year. Normally you're better served to charge a ball, but uh, I think with Paulino running, Terrio could have maybe taken one more step back, played that into a bigger hop. You see that ball just kind of skidded underneath his glove into shallow left center field. If you know your runner, sometimes that will dictate whether you charge a ball or whether you back up a step, and certainly Paulino does not run well. Big man, 6'2", 27. Bourne bunts through strike one. The Astros haven't really been much of a factor the last few years in the division. How about this, Bob? Last year, just their third losing season over their last 18, which is basically the Drake McLean era. A fly to Soriano and left. Easy play for Alfonso. Two outs. Once again, Michael Bourne with the ball in the air to the outfield. Against a lot of hitters in an opposing lineup, you don't want them to hit fly balls to the outfield because they're going to find gaps, maybe find seats from time to time. But with Michael Bourne, you want him to hit the ball in the air. Hitters like Michael Bourne, uh, you know, I think back to my playing days, Brett Butler, you know, little guys who bunt, they slap the ball around the field. It's almost dismissive in the pregame meeting when you talk about opposing hitters. Pitch him up and out over the plate, let him see how far he can hit. And you'll take that the entire three game series. Fly balls to the opposite field off the bat of Michael Bourne. Cubs will take it. A ball and a strike on Keppinger. Start for him at second. Jazz Mansui not in their lineup today. It's old for his last 17. Three balls and a strike. The Astros with just 19 runs, the fewest in the majors. Three and two. Put a lot of pressure on their pitching staff. Roy Oswalt 
who will start tomorrow is 0 and 2. He has a 3.75 ERA. Paulino takes off on the 3 2 pitch. Lined and caught by Fontenot for the third out. They've hit a couple of balls hard, but they've lined it out. Still scoreless. First base, trying to jump along with Mike Fontenot to help him get up the ladder and make the catch on that line drive off the bat of Jeff Kepinger. Nice going. That's kind of reflexive, isn't it? It's just involuntary. Yeah. Probably didn't even realize he did it. <laughs> you see Ted Lilly back here at Wrigley Field. It sounds like he's going to get one more rehab start, and then hopefully he'll be back in the rotation. Maybe a week or so. Fontano with that catch gets his first at bat. The Cubs still seeking their first base runner against Paulino, who was uh, far from efficient in his first start of the year, but took him just 21 pitches to get through the first two. You know Ted Lilly is just chomping at the bit to get back on the field in uniform and help his teammates win some ball games. Like having a Weight Watchers meeting at an all-you-can-eat buffet. All you can do is sit and watch while everybody else is having all the fun. Any of the uh, Cubs players, staff are going to head over. To the United Center tonight to cheer on the Blackhawks. These are getting customized jerseys with their own names on the back. You know, I'm going to have mine on. The 2 1 for Paulino is smack foul. Coy Hill on deck, and then the pitcher Silva. You know, then we talk a lot about advanced scouting and how important it is to this game. And you can see by the way the Astros have aligned their outfield defense that uh, they've done some advanced scouting. Fontenot getting a lot of his base hits in the left center and left field in the early going. Last year, uh, if you looked at the defensive alignment in the outfield, most teams played Mike Fontenot a step or two to pull. Here the Astros shading him the other way based on what he's done recently. And liner is handled by Manzella. Tries to go the other way toward that gap in left center field. Just didn't get it up high enough to get it over the head of Tommy Manzella at shortstop. 
Yeah, that's a good approach though by Mike Font. Nice quick swing, head right down the barrel of the bat. Good solid contact, unfortunately, right at him. Coy gets his third start of the season. Former Wichita State shocker. He played third base in college. Dodgers converted him to a catcher. He began switch hitting back in the eighth grade. That town is Lawton, Oklahoma. Ball strike 2 2. Uh, Coy Hill with the pitcher on deck. I alluded to Coy Hill's mark as a starting catcher in 98 starts behind the plate with the Cubs. The team is 61 and 37. You know, sometimes you can point to the guys that he caught. You get a guy who was the ballet catcher for the best pitcher on the staff, and he's going to have a good one loss record when all is said and done. But Coy has worked behind the plate for everybody in the starting rotation over that time period. It's a hold of this one. Born, the gold glover goes back, can't catch it. And Hill's going to try for three. Relay throw. Not in time. A three base hit for Coy Hill. It's his third career triple. All three have been the last two years. The ball was smoked to that gap in left center field. We mentioned the wind blowing from left to right. Didn't knock that ball down whatsoever. I was a little surprised to see Coy turn the bag at second. You could clearly see the ball was in the air from Michael Bourne, but he just outruns the relay to third base and has himself 90 feet away from the first Cubs run of the game. Corner men are in. They're back up the middle. Now they start coming in as the pitch is delivered to Silver. Especially Kepinger on the right side has come way in. Manzella still playing about halfway at shortstop. I think this benefits Silva bringing the right side of that infield in. Chances are he's going to swing late at that fastball from Felipe Paulino. More likely going to hit it to the right side. 0-2. Of course, he might not see a fastball from Felipe Paulino. I don't know if Carlos has the capability of shortening up. <laughs> we haven't really seen it yet. But this would be a good spot for it. It's solid contact. That'll get it done. Deep right center for Carlos Silva off the warning track on an 0-2 pitch. And a standing double for him. Second career double, second career RBI. He smoked it. Oh, he really did. We have talked a lot about his prowess. See, the last double came back in 03 in batting practice. Tremendous power, tremendous strength. We haven't seen it in a game yet, but here he flexes his muscles, splitting that gap in right center field. Coy Hill could walk home on that one. Silva chugging around first base ends up with a double. Moves well for a big man. Triple by the eight hitter, a double by the pitcher. First two hits for the Cubs. They hit the ball hard all three times in this inning. A nice revenge for Silva, who gave up a hit to Paulino earlier. He gets Terrio two down. Don't miss the action as the Cubs battle the Astros this Sunday at Wrigley Field. Game time is 1:20, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Cubs winter scarf, compliments of Pepsi. A base hit right to an outfielder may not be enough to get Silva in, particularly the guy in right, Hunter Pence. 
He's piled up a bunch of outfield assists in his short career. Koske showing bunt and able to pull it back in time. Yeah, 32 outfield assists in 08 and 09, leading all major league outfielders for Hunter Pence. And I guarantee you, Mike Quaddy is well aware of Hunter Pence's throwing arm in right field. Pence comes over. Still coming. Nice catch as he made the catch in fair territory and then landed on the bullpen mound. That's not an easy play. The Cubs grab the lead though. by fourth meal from Taco Bell open 1 a.m. or later M and I oh Lennon Bob your seats are getting a little better that's good to know Len Dawson Bob yeah. Greasy Len Dawson Bob Greasy fan club <laughs> For Phillies leads off the fourth our AT&T trivia today. What is the record for consecutive losses to start a managerial career? We mentioned Brad Mills started his career 0 and 8 before their win yesterday. You are not the answer. You've already told us that. As Feliz swings away pops it up foul ground Ramirez over no play as he and Terrio watch it drop. Well, maybe the wind might push that one just enough to allow one of those infielders an opportunity, but got about two or three rows back into the seats right down the third baseline. We talk a lot about how the wind affects drives to the outfield, but it affects everything here at Wrigley Field. Ramos comes in, pops the mid, throws a strike to Lee to get the leads. Carlos Lee taking baby steps. He uh, made it out his first time up, but he smoked it to left. Okay, then outside of Houston and perhaps Wrigley Field, I think a lot of people would be surprised to find out that Carlos Lee leads all major league outfielders in RBI since the 03 season. What a pick by Ramirez oh. as Lee's bad luck continues. Can't buy a break. That was a nice play. A really nice play. Ramirez had some tough chances yesterday, some hard hit balls when he was playing in in front of the baseline. 
Obviously with Carlos Lee at the plate, he's going to play as deep as he can and makes a nice backhanded stop. Gets to his feet. Plenty of time to throw across the diamond for the out. Pitch to Pence. A fly ball for Bird and Fukudome. Oh, and they drop wow. it. They get together. They were both calling for it at the exact same time. And it cost them a runner in scoring position as Pence is at second. With two down, it'll be an error on Marlon Bird on a ball that should be caught. And I guess you give the error to the guy who got his glove on it. Just fortunate nobody got hit or hurt. Now this almost falls under that team error category. Either guy could have made the play. I tell you, that's one thing the Cubs have not really worried too much about in the early going. Marlon Bird has really taken over as that captain in center field, and there have been a number of gappers just like that where he has taken charge and made the play, and Fukudome or Soriano has conceded the ball to him. And for whatever reason that time, Kosuke maybe didn't hear Marlon Bird, obviously didn't see him. He was tracking the ball, but that's the first time we've had any kind of miscommunication in the outfield this year. Johnson lines Fukudome can't catch it gets all the way by him Pence scores a tying run Johnson's gonna head around second and get to third easily That's an RBI triple for Johnson First career triple for Johnson and his second career RBI. Well, this will go down as a three base hit, but uh, certainly at least a mental error on the part of Kosuke Fukudome. Got too close to the hop. Couldn't get his body in front of it. It scoots underneath his glove all the way to the wall. By the time it stops rolling, Johnson's on third base, and the Astros have tied the game. An unearned run. There's Mancella with a chance to give the Astros the lead. Could not hold up according to Phil Cuzzy. Strike one. Sounded like he broke his bat, but he ends up with an RBI single to make it 2 1 Houston. here for the Cubs and uh, not all Carlos Silva is doing but this is one of those occasions where he needs to pick up his defense a couple of misplays in the outfield one in air one just a mental mistake will be a lot of times this year where the defense picks up Carlos Silva when he's struggling on the mound they need him to pick the team up right now that third out it's 2 1 Houston as Quintero swinging away and fouls back. And again, Silva might have to expand that strike zone earlier in the count. A hyper aggressive offense against a strike thrower. I guess that's a better problem to have than. Tell a guy you need to throw more strikes. And we always talk about quality of strikes. For most veteran pitchers who have good command of their stuff, they love to face a lineup that swings aggressively. They feel if they can execute their pitches, get those early swings, they'll get the ball put in play weekly and hopefully get a lot of very quick outs. Silva has a sign from Hill. The kick and the pitch, swing and a miss. Strike three. They get two unearned runs, and the Astros now lead 2 1.
Into Wrigley on a base hit. When you round the bag at first, you end up running downhill off the crown and then back uphill to get to first base. And invariably, you'd have a couple of players stumbling across first base on what should have been extra base hits. I'm surprised he didn't mention it. He's so fast, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Cubs find themselves behind for the first time. 2 1. A ball and a strike on Derek Lee. Again, wind blowing left to right. It was uh, out of the Northwest at 7 when we started. It's blowing a lot harder than that at the moment. Shank foul. Two and two. Paulino throwing hard. That one at 97. That's so yesterday. Francisco Liriano. Excellent performance against Boston. The the twins, even though they're without their closer, Joe Nathan, for the season, they're feeling pretty good about things in their new park. With Liriano's back to the guy we saw in 06, it's going to help them a lot. They're 7 and 3. He's going host Kansas City tonight. Lee grounds out. Let's answer the ATT trivia question. For consecutive defeats to start a managerial career. You remember Malachi Kittrich? <laughs> the 1904 Senators? Yeah, they started out 0 and 13 and actually had a tie in the second game of that 04 season, but uh, obviously a tie is not a win. I had to look this one up, man, because uh, technically Kittredge should not have been the manager to start that season for the Washington Senators. A gentleman by the name of Patsy Donovan was supposed to manage that ball club. He had a beef with his former team, the Cardinals, said they owed him some money. So he sat out the beginning of the season while he was waiting to resolve his contract issues. Kittredge took over as a manager and will forever be in the record books. Well, at least till somebody loses 14 to start a season. Right. I like that name, Malachi. Well, ultimately, Malachi. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. what it is, yeah. Ultimately, Patsy Donovan did show up to manage the Senators team. Uh, at that point, uh, they were 1 and 16. They went on to finish that year at 38 and 113. Ouch. One two to Ramirez outside. Pitch. They foul this one off to the right. I think he wants us to see that he's uh, where he's supposed to be today. <laughs> well, as long as you're with mom and dad, you're right where you're supposed to be. He's playing PA announcer right now. Batting third. <laughs> Terrell just couldn't hang on to it. Still two and two. Yeah, catchers always feel bad when they drop that foul strike. With two strikes on the hitter, but really there's nothing you can do about it. There is uh, obviously not enough time to react in that foot between the bat and your glove. 
Broken bat roller to Johnson. He throws across for the out. Probably shouldn't say this, Len, but we have not seen nearly as many broken bats and barrels flying around the infield uh, in the early part of this season as we've seen in the past couple of years. Baseball has worked very hard to uh, study the issue and uh, look at every broken bat, determine why it broke, what the green was like. Bird grounds to Johnson, a shutdown, one, two, three, all ground out fourth. For Paulino, 2 1, Houston. Five dollar foot long subs from Subway. Felipe Paulino takes ball one. He's one for one on the day. Both pitchers are in fact. Interesting story out of Kansas City today. Royals outfielder Jose Guillen. Said last September he almost died because of blood clots in his legs. Little humpback liner is run down by Mike Fontano. Talking to the Kansas City Star. Said he had to stay in the hospital in the offseason for 20 days dealing with those blood clots. Battle of injuries last season. But they weren't very specific about uh, what he was dealing with in September. He's calling it right leg injury. So now we know. One thing we know about Jose Guillen, it doesn't affect that right throwing arm. Still, to this day, one of the strongest outfield arms in the game. Off to a very good start. Five homers this season. In the first nine games. Born another one in the air this time a liner caught by Soriano so they've handled Michael Bourne well. The fifth annual Chicago Cubs charities race to Wrigley 5k on Saturday April 24th starts at Clark and Addison continues through the Wrigleyville neighborhood and finishes with a run down the Wrigley Field concourse and under the famous marquee. Each participant receives a performance management race t-shirt this year. Personal fundraising proceeds benefit Children's Memorial Hospital. To register, visit Cubs.com. Always a great cause, and it's become a, a wonderful annual event. Two O on Kepinger. Astros have always had some interesting uniforms. That's the old 
late 70s, early 80s look. Enos Cabell still has one hanging in his closet. Terry Poole go down the list. Nolan Ryan. Jose Cruz. Jose Cruz Sr., yeah. Silva can't get it, but it's backhanded by Fontenot. He throws out Jeff Keppinger. Halfway home, 2-1 Houston. Luke. Guess unless we go about 19 innings or something. Soriano with a leadoff single. To kick off the bottom of the fifth. Soriano jumping on that first pitch. Appeared to be a slider down low and away. A lot of top spin on that hard line drive through the left side. Good start to the inning for the Cubs. Soriano playing like a leadoff man in this spot, even though he's hitting sixth in the lineup. Does not have a stolen base attempt so far. Not running his spot, and he takes it low. Yell, how about a bunt, Lou? Uh, but in this spot, there's a lot to think about. The inning, the score, most importantly, where you are in your lineup. But I think in this spot, if you bunt, you're shooting for one run. And I still think it's too early to do that. Base hit to left, two on with nobody out. Point being, I Always score more than one, but if you bunt in this spot, I think you're saying we're, we're playing for one run. And I don't. I don't think they want one in this spot. One more. Fondo with that opposite field stroke that I mentioned earlier in the ball game that he's been using so effectively in the early going this season. As you said, where you're at in the game, and it's a completely different situation if you're going to pinch hit for that nine spot for the pitcher. But this early in the ball game, Carlos Silva throwing the ball well. No chance you're going to pinch it for that pitcher spot. So why bunt a runner into scoring position and give up an out for your eight and nine hitter in the lineup? And you might bunt with Silva after Hill. So that's the bunting position in this particular inning. Not Mike Fontenot.
Well, Lou's not a big fan of giving up outs, period. I mean, as you said, the game situation and the score will dictate whether a bunt is a proper play or not, but you know, when given a choice, Lou would much prefer to let his guys swing the bat. And Hill sure did that. He tripled back in the third inning and scored on Carlos Silva's double. Swing and the miss. Now it is likely Silva would be asked to bunt here to move both guys into scoring position. Well, Silva doubled himself to the gap. Boy Hill swinging right underneath the fastball up and out over the plate, frustrated with himself. Most hitters feel if you get a fastball up and out over the plate, if you make some kind of solid contact, that boy time boy came up empty. The Astros are expecting a bunt. And Silva shows it. Gets it down pretty hard. Throw goes to third. They get Soriano in the relay in plenty of time. It's a double play. Silva thinks he bunted it off his foot. We're going to look at it when we come back. It did take a weird hop out of the box. At any rate, the inning is over. Silva was thrown out handily at first base. He felt that he was interfered with coming out of the batter's box by the catcher Quintero. But the defensive player has the right to come out and make a defensive play. Silva needs to run hard down that first baseline and not stop and be an umpire. Well, we talked about this very issue uh, over the weekend in Cincinnati. You can't stop. The old adage from the old West shoot first, ask questions later. Absolutely. Run first and ask questions later. You know, and there was some tremendous confusion on the part of the Astros there defensively. The, the shortstop Manzella was breaking for third base as if it were the old fashioned wheel play, but the third baseman, Johnson, never charged. So they had two defenders at third base when Soriano was coming in there. He was forced easily, but as we showed you, Silva not running down the first baseline allowed the Astros to turn an inning ending double play. Ball one to Pedro Feliz. Hit by a pitch and a ground out. High and deep to left. Soriano's going to have room. A couple of steps in front of the track. Who's your captain? Every month we vote for the favorite player to win the Captain Clutch Award. One voter and player will be selected monthly for an award presentation on Wrigley Field. Voting is simple. Become a fan on Facebook and submit your pick. 
One winner will be chosen at random to present the player with the award. Visit CaptainMorganClub.com for all the info. Strike one on Carlos Lee. I want to send a big get well wish to Eileen Brady. The wife of Cubs front office favorite Mr. Big. And they are watching every day and the Cubs are a big part of keeping their spirits high. So I hope Eileen's feeling a lot better. Inside the Lee. Two and one. Another birthday for Austin Lockhart from Round Lake. Ten years old today. Happy birthday, Austin. Missed some of the action after the game. Go to Comcast on demand for access to Comcast Sportsnet games. Ready to watch on your schedule. Don't have Comcast on demand? Then call 1 888 for best TV. There's a base hit for Carlos Lee. He seems to be more locked in than he had been. Uh, ask one of the people who watches the Astros every day uh, is he pressing with Berkman out? And I guess he says, no, that's not been the case. He always likes hitting in this part. A couple of hard hit balls his first time, two times up rather, this time just a bouncing ball back up the middle of the field that goes through for a base hit. Terrio shading way over in the hole for Carlos Lee, who is normally a dead pull hitter from that right side of the plate. One and oh to Pence. Popped up. As Derek Lee makes a catch for out number two. Note from Becky, she wants to welcome back from Iraq Joshua Fleming. Welcome back, Joshua, and also a happy 47th birthday to Michael Katars here at the ballpark today. Johnson tripled home a run in the fourth to tie it, then he scored the go ahead run. And the Tommy Manzella single, both runs were unearned because of an error caused by a collision out in right. Right center between Bird and Fukudome. It's been the play of the game to this point. Harlan was charged with the error. Chased a bad one in the dirt. Boy Hill will have to toss to Derek Lee. And that ends the inning. Bottom six, still 2-1 Houston.
their first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Tune in to Comcast Sportsnet at 7 for exclusive coverage and expert analysis on Chevy Blackhawks pregame live. Blackhawks Predators game one tonight at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Nothing like Stanley Cup Blackhawks hockey in HD here on Comcast Sportsnet. Terry just turned away from that fastball at 94. Easier to turn into a breaking ball, not so much a heater in the mid 90s. No, no, no. I, that old saying about taking one for the team is overrated when somebody throws a 95 mile an hour heater at your rib cage. Survival instinct takes over, and you just try to get out of the way as best you can. Big rolling 68 mile an hour curveball might be a different story. Up in the air for Hunter Pence, still looking for the ball. Now he finds it. Hey, kids, have you ever dreamt of running the bases at Wrigley Field? Well, now you can. The Chicago Cubs are proud to present Family Sundays at the friendly confines this spring. Purchase four tickets to any Sunday home game in April or May, and each child 15 and younger in your group will get a chance to run the bases following that day's game. Tickets are limited, so visit Cubs.com to order today. Fukudome takes it inside. Paulina landed in a funny spot. He's been really good today. With these two guys on the mound today, Len, there's a good chance that it'll be flat out there in the middle of the infield. Paulino at 270. Silva is uh, listed at 250. I think he might weigh a little more than that. Talking about well over 500 pounds of pitcher out there on the mound today. Push that mound right down into the ground. You mentioned some pretty ugly numbers for Paulino in the big leagues. Five and twelve. This is his thirtieth career game, twenty second start, and that's his first walk. The one thing Brad Mills has not been able to do a whole lot is set up his bullpen in the late innings with a lead. He's hoping to have that chance today. Like Paulino, I'm sure to at least get through six. We talked a lot about this in the early going last season for the Cubs and Lou Pinella, the ability to use your bullpen in an orderly fashion. You like to assign roles in that bullpen so everybody knows exactly when they're going to be used. But unfortunately, if your starting pitcher doesn't get you deep into a ball game, you end up using who's healthy, who can throw today. You can have a good start here against the Cubs last September 2nd, six innings, two runs. His best start in the majors, June 27th of last year, seven innings. Three hits, one run. Struck out nine in that game. The 1 0 to Derek downstairs. Alino was born in Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic. So he's from the Dominican, but he's a product of their Venezuelan academy. 3 and 0. Seen a lot of 3 and 0 swinging in the early going this season by Cubs hitters. See if Derek Lee has a green light. I'm sure he does. Derek rarely chases 3 0 pitches, however. Taking all the way that time. The good news is Derek doesn't seem to show any lingering effects from that thumb injury. It's been a theme for him this week. Sore thumb and then came back and got the thumb. And one slider from Paulino not willing to give in to D. Lee and that good hitters count. Now see I, I have no problem with that pitch being called a strike. 
but uh, yesterday Angel Campos wasn't calling it. There goes Koske as Lee fouls it off. Wait, Lenny, you bring up a good point. We talk about making adjustments in the game of baseball all the time, adjusting to opposing pitchers, adjusting to field conditions. You should never have to make adjustments to the strike zone. Now, that's not the case, and we all know it. Every umpire uh, seemingly has their own translation of where the strike zone is, what pitches are good, what pitches are bad. That's what makes hitting uh, even tougher than it has to be. Koske takes off again. This one's popped up behind the Astros pen and out of play. Uh, okay, I was going to say the guy in the Sandberg jersey already has a foul ball. Don't give it to him. Give it to a kid. You're looking for a kid. Look at that kid that's ditching school today. Very nice. <laughs> the checks on Koske. Paulino for a big man out there. I mentioned earlier, 6'2, 270. He's got some quick feet. Turned and snapped that throw to first base in a hurry. Dome running. Lofted into right center. The gold glover from last year, Michael Bourne, really battling the sun. Falls down from the seat of his pants. Lobs it back in as Fukudome gets back to first. It was unintentional, but that ball was perfectly placed up in the sun for Michael Bourne. You can see he ends up on his backside after battling the sun, battling the wind. Making a nice catch out there. 2009 Gold Glove winner in the outfield at the National League. So he kept his feet moving, but it becomes pretty challenging to do so in that spot. I would have fallen down. I would have just tripped over myself. Uh, I would have fallen down as soon as I moved the step out there. Darrell looking to pick Fukudome off first base that time in his haste to get up out of the crowd. He just lost the handle on the baseball. Got a nice note from a former Cubs radio broadcaster, one of the voices of the San Diego Padres, Andy Mazur, catching us over lunch today. He does a nice job with Ted Leitner and Hall of Famer Jerry Coleman. Oh, Doctor. Jerry Coleman, one of our favorites for a long time. You guys in San Diego must have some time on their hands. I got a couple of text messages from Mark Grant. Juliet during the ball game yesterday. Grant's name was mentioned in a, a nice uh, column written by a former Cub Doug Glanville, doing some work for ESPN.com. Talked about how uh, Mud would always say the word great gets tossed around too often. Pretty good stuff talking about Jason Hayward and some of the young guys. Paulino working on a gem so far, 2 1 Astros.
Manzella. We start the seventh in a tight one. The Astros leading 2 1 on a couple of unearned runs off Carlos Silva. He's been very good today. Hill got his cage rattled back there on that last foul tip. Caught him up near the forehead area, just shakes it off. And they've really improved the padding on those hockey goalie style masks. Came into vogue uh, a few years ago. A number of guys uh, had some headache and concussion issues that were possibly related to uh, the new mask, but they've improved the padding. And Pitchers are well protected and their visibility much better with those new masks. Bouncer to Terrio. Tomorrow, catch a full day of live Chicago sports here on Comcast Sportsnet at 11 30. Pre game show setting you up for the Cubs hosting the Astros at noon here at Wrigley. And then at 6 30, the fire march. On Washington to battle the D.C. United. Another huge day in Chicago sports beginning tomorrow at 11.30 in the morning on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Quintero makes a slider for a strike. No action in the Astros' pin as Paulino will take the at bat after his catcher. Swing and a miss. A nice note from uh, one of the best stats guys in the business. Daddy Wags, Mark Wagner, Cincinnati, catching us and uh, pointing out the Reds are five and five. They play ten games. They don't have a win from a starting pitcher yet. It's kind of a quirky note. Base hit for Quintero. Hey, Cup fans, don't miss your chance to be part of the brand new PNC Club of Chicago. The newly built club located down the third baseline offers high end catering, a full service top shelf bar, indoor and outdoor seating, and other benefits that allow for a truly all inclusive game day experience. Membership also includes parking for every home game. To reserve your season tickets in the PNC Club of Chicago, call 773 404 4200. Paulino. Bunts and Derek Lee will tag him. All important insurance run now in scoring position for Michael Bourne. Good friend John Cusack, huge Cub fan. Chicago native will handle the stretch today. He's here at the ballpark most of the time when he's not working, so we might as well give him something to do. Jumped out of the hot tub time machine to uh, <laughs> see the stretch today. Blocked by Hill. Michael Bourne 0 for 3, but he came in with four straight multi hit games and a seven game hitting streak overall. Bourne steps out. Cuz Quintero is the runner at second. The Cubs might have a shot on him at the plate on a base hit. Outside, two and one. Well, you're right about Quintero's foot speed out there at second base. However, the Cubs' middle infielders are really giving him a lot of room. He could actually get about another 10 or 12 feet on his leadoff at second base if he wanted to do so. Strike two. Oh. 
Going to have to hurry. Fontenot, quick exchange. They get the out. Stretch time with John Cusack. Hanging out, uh, Jeff yeah. Garland over in the PNC Club in Chicago. Give us uh, an early review. Unbelievable. I mean, it's uh, it's just right down where the old skyboxes used to be, and it's a nice little club down there. And, and uh, the Ricketts family's done amazing stuff with the, with the ballpark here, just some little improvements like that. Uh, but it's just so great to be back out here and see the Cubs. Outside corner on Marlon Bird. Did you eat what, what Garland ate? Did you stay away from the sugar? I know he's no he's not eating candy or any of that stuff anymore. Pop yeah. tarts all that stuff. No, no, he's, he's he looks good. He's he lost, does. He's lost a lot of weight. He, feels like he looks he looks real good. And I stay with the you know the low carb high protein. Caveman diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bison dogs and the bison burgers this year down in the uh, I know of course I, yeah I didn't, I didn't know there were any bison left. Apparently there are. They've given their life so that we can eat bison dogs. Yes. The <laughs> savage world. One and two on Marlon Bird, Soriano to follow, and then Mike Fontenot here in the Cubs seven. I think the Cubs fans are gonna fall in love with Marlon Bird. I love the way he plays. We were talking earlier about his work habits. Nobody will outwork him, that's for sure. He's already endeared himself to the bleacher bums out there diving for balls in the gaps and hitting big home runs and yep. he's always glad to be here at the ballpark. He, he understands what it means uh, to be a player in front of these fans here at Rigby. Yeah, I saw him. Uh, he came back out after Fukudome had that big single the other day and he did a barrel roll and then he started bowing down to Fukudome. <laughs> I thought, wow, for the first week in Rigby, he's a uh, guy gets the joke. Way outside. Paulino still throwing hard. That was at 96. But nowhere near the zone. Brabo the lefty and Bird the righty. And another gorgeous mid April afternoon. Well, you've probably been out here at the ballpark many times this time of year when there's still snowing. Absolutely. This is just awesome. No, it was more like bear weather. High in the air, Bourne going after it, still going back, and it's going to be over his head into the vines, and he 
holds his hands up, which is what he's supposed to do in that spot, and that'll keep Marlin to a double. But the tying run is in scoring position. That ball, by the way, will probably appear in July when somebody else hits a ball into that area and the other one will come out. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Marlon Bird. Uh, no player is ever slump proof. But he hits so many balls to the middle of the field, I think he's going to suffer fewer and shorter slumps than most players. You saw that long home run to center field yesterday. This time a double to the base of the wall in straightaway center. When your swing is producing hard hit balls to the middle of the field, if you're a little in front or a little behind, you're still going to hit it hard in play, either to right or left field. So that'll bring up Soriano. And Bob, we come right back to this question we asked in the fifth inning. Do you bunt in this spot, but then you consider who's at the plate? I don't think uh, bunting is one of Alfonso Soriano's uh, fonder things in life, and I seriously doubt if we'll see him attempt to bunt here. I mean, he may try to put down a bunt for a base hit on his own, but uh, a remote possibility that Lou will ask him to bunt. Well, Soriano has not laid down a successful sacrifice since July of 06. Well, then he's due. <laughs> <laughs> He shows hey, bunt. Yeah. There you go. Takes a strike. Well, one thing that will do, whether he intended to bunt that ball or not, it's going to force the Astros to at least respect the possibility of a bunt. You would think the third baseman might draw in, although he's backing up. The Astros don't believe it. They're not taking the bait. Not showing it that time. Inside. One and one. We're with John Cusack. Two one. Astros it's starting to get late. We're already in the bottom of the seventh. This game flew by. Pounding him inside. Two and one. Jeff Fulcino. A right-hander up in their bullpen. They have a new closer this year, former Marlin Matt Lindstrom, who can hit the high 90s. To left, Carlos Lee is going to watch it go over his head. All right. That'll tie it up as Bird will score back-to-back -back doubles. And Alfonso really needed that. Yeah, he did. A tough week for him here at home, especially with the defense, but he comes through at the plate. And he made that nice catch in the first inning, right? Run it back to the warning track. Yes, he did. He's had a good day. Yeah, it's good to see. Some kind of an off-speed pitch right in the middle of the plate, maybe a straight changeup, and he knocked the living daylights out of that one. The only thing that kept that in the ballpark was the top spin, but deep enough to allow Marlon Bird to score easily. Soriano now in scoring position for the bottom of the order. Mike Pond, no Coy Hill in the pitcher spot. You may see Fontenot bunt in this situation because we're at a point in the ball game where Lou is likely to pinch hit for Silva if the Cubs have an opportunity to score a run. He's pitched a terrific game, hasn't he? Sure has. The Cubs are really pleased with what they've gotten out of Carlos Silva here early on. Quite sure what they were going to get after an injury plague season last year. Really, starting pitching has uh, overall been very good. And 2 0 on Fontenot. And that's with Lily on the DL, too. Yeah. And that worked for us coming back. Chicago area native Tim Burdak, a left hander. Joined Polchino. Good take, 3 0. And, and Nady looks like he's a, a terrific pickup. You know, look real comfortable out there at first base. Like a legitimate five hole guy, right? Yeah, a legitimate bench this year for Lou Pinella. Some guys he can go yeah, through yeah. the pinch hit, some guys that can play multiple positions, and some home run power off the bench. Yeah. 
He's got some pop. Ball four. He walked him. John, I want to ask you about a hot tub time machine. You're back at in every kind of genre in terms of movies. Uh, but do you like going back to the comedy? Yeah, you know, I figured that this was the um, it would be the Citizen Kane of all hot tub films. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, I do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, mean, I think it's I think it's the most important hot tub film ever made. I, I can say that honestly, right? Without. I without, can't, without bragging, right? I can't argue with. No. Not sure about time machine this movies. Is the only hot tub, tub ones, no question. Brad Arnsberg is their new pitching coach. As he's out to talk to Paulino and just about the entire infield. Now it's fun to come back and do. Uh, that's just pure silliness. So it's fun to come back and do just a real broad comedy. So. People may wonder, but even when the, you shoot a thriller or a, a drama. Heart-wrenching movie. On the set, people are happy. You know, even if it's a sad movie, it's fun to shoot movies. Yeah, yeah, it can be. A, it's a really. A, it's sort of like um, ball players here. You know, you're, it's, a, it's such a lucky thing to be able to do that for a living. That uh, you know, the, the, the smart ones are the ones who get that joke and uh, feel grateful because uh, you know, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to be creative for a living that way. Coy Hill with two on. And nobody out. They're going to throw to second. They have Soriano caught. Bad throw, however. So he's in safely at third. It's a stolen base for Soriano. Well, it worked. It's his day. You can see he was anticipating that butt in fair territory when Coy Hill pulled the bat back. Quintero thought he had... An easy out at second base, but Soriano uses that speed that we haven't seen a lot of in the early going this season to beat that relay throw on to third. Might change things here for Coy Hill. Now, Silva's in the on-deck circle, but I have to believe that there's a couple of different Cubs uh, up in the tunnel with their helmet and batting gloves on ready to pinch hit, depending on what happens with this at bat by Coy Hill. He calls a good game too, play Hill, doesn't he? Boy, he does. And we were talking about it before the game, John. 61 and 37 is his record when he starts behind the plate. Yeah. He sort of uh, takes over where Blanco was the last year. Uh, uh, so hopefully that'll rub off on our everyday guy Soto. Because he sure does seem to know, to know how to work it. That's a strike. And it's two and one. Well, you know, having trouble spotting the fastball, so he goes to an off-speed pitch. Looked like a backdoor slider there for called strike one on Coy Hill. Called strike two, just about the same pitch. Looked a little outside. Coy Hill thought it was a little bit outside. Too close to take. Need contact in this spot. Paulino would like a strikeout close, but outside on a heater three and two. He's pounding away at that outside corner with off speed pitches and fastballs. That time a little too far wide in the estimation of Brian O'Norm. He walked him and they are loaded up. A handshake from Ryan Terrio as Carlos Silva goes back to the dugout. He'll be taken down for the pinch hitter, Chad Tracy. What another outstanding start by Carlos Silva today here for the Cubs. I don't think either one of those runs was earned, were they? No. Both unearned because of the error. Out in right center. Chad Tracy will bat with the bases loaded, and that's going to be it for Paulino. So it's the Lexus pursuing perfection call to the bullpen. Hey, John, thanks so much for stopping by. Great to be back, man. And uh, tied it up here. Hopefully, the Cubs can get some more for us in the seventh. So it's good to see you, John. We'll right. be back in a moment.
Nail back your census form today. Left-hander Tim Burdak coming into a tough spot. Chad Tracy announced he will not hit. Instead, it'll be Xavier Nady. Burdak, the only left-hander available out of the bullpen for the Houston Astros, and manager Brad Mills fired his bullet here. He was going to put the lefty on the left-handed hitting Chad Tracy, and Lou countered that move by sending up the powerful right-handed hitting Xavier Nady. are going to defensively play their infield in all the way around. A 2-2 tie. Here's a pitch to Nady. Golfed into center. Not deep, though. Warren coming in. Soriano is going to come about a third of the way down the line and stop, and it's a good thing he did. He would have been out by a mile. We talked a lot about the defensive prowess of Hunter Pence in right field. Michael Bourne with a gold glove last year has a very underrated throwing arm. Not the strongest throwing arm, but he gets rid of it quickly, gets it online, usually puts that ball right where he wants. The stutter step there as he catches that ball with his momentum going toward home plate, and that throw is right on the money. Soriano with a bluff down that third baseline. Still a great opportunity for the Cubs here to put some runs on the board with the top of the batting order, Ryan Terrio at the plate. And now the Astros will look to turn two. They don't necessarily have to throw to the plate as Terrio pushes a bunt. Oh, and a mistake by Feliz. A huge mistake as the Cubs take the lead three to two. That ball looked like it was going to roll foul. But Feliz tried to pick it up. It glanced off his glove. It's a sacri or rather an infield hit on the bunt by Terrio. And the Cubs lead. That took a right turn right at the end. What an unexpected move by Ryan Terrio. We talked about Feliz. He's normally a third baseman. He has played a considerable amount of first. And I agree with you. You can see as that ball hit the corner of the grass, it was headed toward foul territory. Feliz came up empty on his scoop attempt, and Terrio ran right past him. Now, Feliz may claim, they're still loaded, by the way, for Fukudome. I knew it was going to go foul, but I thought I could pick it up and tag Terrio and just get the second out. But it didn't work out. And the Cubs have scored twice in the inning. And we hope to not be done. High fly, Bourne. Circling around as Fontano tags. The throw is going to go to third. It's cut off in the middle of the diamond. Four to two on a sack fly. Job by Fukudome. We know at times in the past he struggled against left handers, but gets a barrel on that one, lost that high fly ball into center field. This time, Bourne could not get his momentum going toward his target. Had to tack on another run, and Coy Hill quickly advances from second to third. The Alexis pursuing perfection call to the bullpen. Right hander Jeff Fulcino is in, three in for the Cubs, four two.
Rouse.com. Rouse, the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the Cubs.com shop. Except no substitutes. 4-2 Cubs. First and third. Polchino the righty. Facing Derek Lee. Fifth appearance in the Astros' 10th game of the year for Polchino. 0-1-1. Well, Chino was the Astros rookie of the year last year. been a strike but it's a perfectly executed slider started on the outer third of the plate may have ended up off the plate away Didn't hit that ball with any authority anyway you might as well take it and hope the umpire calls it a ball Same slider again on the outside corner. That one caught a lot more plate that was down well below the knees. We saw the pitch before that was a called strike. He tries to throw the same one again. Straight back over the heart of the plate, but down. Got in on him and he hit it foul. LeBron Santos feeling better, a little under the weather. Taking the day off. His radio duties. If you're watching, we miss you. The radio booth made a call to the bullpen for the lefty, Dave Otto, filling in today. Three and two on the lead. on the 3 2 very late swing by Derek ball is scalded just to protect the plate swing by Derek Lee that time not a real good pitch to hit but too close to take a late swing resulting in that line drive foul ball up into the bleachers on the right side Slider low and away again. And he drills it deep for a three run homer. They have broken it wide open. It's seven to two. Believe it or not, that home run may have been set up by that called strike two. The slider low and away. Gino kept trying to go back to that pitch. Couldn't get it back out to the location where he got the called strike. And that time he left it over the middle of the plate and down. Derek Lee golfed it out of here 
for a three-run bomb. A six-run seventh. Ramirez in ninth. Cub to bat this inning. With Felipe Paulino's line totally ruined by this inning. He started the inning, couldn't get it out after four batters. Line fair for Ramirez, his first hit today. And it's a double, first double of the year. Paulino charged with five runs in six plus innings. We talked a lot this season about how teams are working Aramis Ramirez away, but when they do make a mistake where he can pull the ball, he has been hitting the ball crisply. That time a line drive down into the left field corner for extra bases. Keep the line moving. Side edge, Joe and two to Bird. Started the inning. With a booming double that never came out of the vines in center. Andrew. Wilton Lopez is up. Cubs offense really coming to life here in the seventh. It scored just once in the first six innings against Felipe Paulino. To give uh, the bullpen a little extra cushion today, that three run homer certainly helped. See John Grabo in the eighth. One hopper to Keppinger to end the inning. Ten come to the plate. Six score. Three on a Derek Lee. Three run blast. It's seven two Cubs after seven.
Now Carlos Silva get his first win as a Cub. Ball one to Jeff Kepinger. That's a strike. Silva certainly deserves an opportunity to win this ball game today. His second strong outing in a row and did not walk a batter once again. Consistently throwing good quality strikes. Two unearned runs over those seven innings. Base hit to right for Kepinger to start the inning. I told you he loves hitting lefties. And a great contact hitter. Only one strikeout for every 16 at bats. The only other active player with a better ratio is Juan Pierre. One strikeout about every 18 at bats. Against lefties, Jeff Kepinger is an elite hitter. His OPS is over 900. 650 against righties. It's a different guy at the plate. When you put a lefty against him. Feliz hits a double play ball. It goes six, four, three. Just how you draw it up a hard ground ball right at one of your defenders in this instance Ryan Terrio He gets it to Fontenot in great shape plenty of time to get Feliz Taylor made double play ball You want that ball to be hit hard with the runner at first base to give you plenty of time to get to the bag, get the force play at second base, make the relay throw, and then get the heck out of the vicinity. Avoid that sliding base runner. Two pitch. Lee swings and misses at a changeup. Seven two Cubs, last of the eight.
And the Cubs leading by five and a chance to tack on some more. As Tyler Colvin will lead it off, his first at bat, facing Wilton Lopez, one of three natives of Nicaragua, currently in the major leagues. Lopez was claimed off waivers uh, from the San Diego Padres in April last year in eight games with the Astros last season. 0 oh, 2 record with an ERA of over 8. He gave up 32 base hits in 19 in the third innings pitch. One and one on Colvin. The paid crowd. 37 291. Enjoying a beautiful day on the north side with their team leading by five. Colvin rolls it into right. Plan your next corporate function or family gathering in the comfort of the Wrigley Field Mezzanine Suites presented by Nuveen Investments. Suites are available now for games during the season. To book your suite or for more information, visit www.cubs.com backslash suites or call 773-404-4200. Bontano took a walk as part of that big seventh inning rally. to the count. Comes next opponent, the New York Mets. Four games at City Field starting Monday night. The Mets are in St. Louis this weekend. Oliver Perez and Chris Carpenter tonight. And will dust himself off. Ready for a one two pitch. He'll jump a little rope there. That slider headed right at his right knee, able to get out of the way. Avoid any damage from the baseball. For the second week in a row, the Cubs' Monday opponent will be involved in Sunday night baseball. The Cubs will probably get into New York before the Mets do. Half swing by Fontano. We are working with Bloomberg Sports to provide some of the most in-depth and compelling data analysis baseball has ever seen. Fans can get their own set of these new state-of-the-art tools from Bloomberg, built for fun and for fantasy play. Go to BloombergSports.com to get a preview and find out all the details. Outside on Coy Hill, Mike Leak makes his second major league start uh, tonight in Pittsburgh for the Reds. He'll face Zach Duke, who's already 2 0. Closer will get a shot here, even though it won't be a safe chance, as Jeff Baker's going to hit for Grabo after Hill. Coy Hill around the batting cage today. He's trying some new bats made out of yellow birch. He said he's been using the same bat in batting practice for almost a month now. Reportedly to uh, have the same kind of flexibility as good old fashioned white ash, but yet hard as the new maple bats. Kind of a combination of the two. Base it for Hill. Colvin ending up at third. They're at the corners for the pinch hitter Baker. Boy, Hill has reached three out of four times. Has already scored twice. 
You like that production from the eight spot. Oh, yeah, that yellow birch bat comes through for the second time in the ball game. You know, I tried some alternative woods when I played Len, but Weeping Willow just didn't seem to work. <laughs> Try Paulson. Oh, yeah. Good job by Colvin to get that extra base. With the exception of Giovanni Soto, that exhausts the Cubs bench in the ball game today. So we'll get his first taste of the Giants Dodger rivalry starting tonight in LA. Well, as uh, Mark commented, I've been knocked out of the playoffs the last two years by the Dodgers, so I've already heard it from their fans. But now he's a Giant. It's going to get worse for him. Oh, yeah. Boy, Halliday. Takes a 2 0 mark and an 0.56 ERA into his start against Florida tonight. Moneyball Sanchez scheduled for the Marlins. Lopez with a one two to Baker. Two and two. Baker has been the best pinch hitter for Lou Pinelli in the early going this season. Two for three with that big pinch hit home run in Cincinnati on that last road trip. Bouncing ball. Took Kepinger right to the bag. The little flip and the turn. Four, six, three. So two hits, no runs in the inning. Off to the ninth we go. Seven, two, Cubs. Celebrities discuss the day's hottest sports topics. Don't miss Chicago Tribune Live tonight at 5.30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Here's Carlos Marmel. The bullpen holdover from opening day of last year. And he has really taken to the closer's role. This is not a safe spot with his team leading by five.
Slider is outside to Hunter Pence. Two and one. A reminder: Cup fans, get in on the uh, Way of Life campaign. Go to Cubs.com and submit your short story about why Cubs baseball is a way of life. Two and two. Pence taking a home run cut, even though he chokes up on that bat considerably. Lynch is up off the knob of the bat. Another pretty good home run hitter used to choke up on the bat. The all time home run leader, Barry Bonds, yeah. used to choke up about an inch and a half on that bat. That worked for him. Yeah. Lee will take it unassisted. His game produced by Mark Brady. Our director Bob Albrecht, our associate producer Tamara Anderson. Stage manager in the booth Christine Charbonneau, our remote technical manager is Mark Harper. The senior executive producer of Comcast Sportsnet is Jim Porno Jr. Busy weekend of sports here on Comcast Sportsnet. And great work as always by our entire crew. Back by Chris Johnson. Now Chris Johnson is likely to see something on this next pitch that I would venture he hasn't seen in the minor leagues. Two fastballs from Marmel, likely to get the slider right here on the 0 2 count. Got him, called strike three on a slider. Our GMC player of the game, Carlos Silva. Excellent once again. Uh, really good on the mound. Seven innings, only five hits, two unearned runs. Did not walk a batter once again. And at the plate, contributed with a big RBI double to the gap in right center field. Outstanding day for Carlos. This would be Carlos' first win, talking about Silva, here at Wrigley Field since he was a Philly back in 02. He got his second major league win. And his first win in the big leagues was against these Astros. One and one to Tommy Manzella. One and two. Fans are on their feet. As the Cubs look to get back to 500. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Cubs win. They come back with six in the seventh. To turn a 2 1 deficit into a 7 2 win. That was a nice one, partner. That was a real nice one. Good starting effort by Carlos Silva. The offense really came to life in that seventh inning, batting around. A lot of good things, a lot of good defense in the ball game today. This is one you like to carry right into the rest of this series.
So that's going to do it for our game coverage. The final score once again, the Cubs seven, the Astros two. Our next Comcast Sportsnet telecast right back here tomorrow, straight up noon. Roy Oswalt and lefty Tom Gorzolani. In game scoring provided by Scorepad. And now for Bob and our entire crew. I'm Len Casper. Let's send it over to our studio now for Sylvania Post Game Live. <laughs>